Hey, welcome to Rock, Paper, and Hand Grenades. I am Gary Harper, representative from the big city of Ware. This is Josh Solomon, who lives all the way over in Goffstown. You didn't even stutter that time. I know. There's nobody here to impress oh, I gotcha. with my lack of uh, memory. Oh, I see. So it was kind of pointless. So I got my Glock hey, pen. Hey, hey. No, no. Oh, yeah. I got my Glock, I got my Glock pen. You a Glock fan? Kind of. I like Ruger. I'm kind of partial to Ruger, but I got a Glock pen. Yeah. I don't have a Ruger pen, so I don't have it. Oh. I got uh, I got the Rugers and I got Glocks. Pen? Do you have a pen? I don't have a pen. See? I have a hat. Do you have a Glock hat? I got a Glock hat. I used to have a Ruger hat, but I don't know where, what happened to it. I don't have a Glock hat. What do I got? No, nope. I got nothing. Oh, I got a Wilson Hill. Do I have a Wilson Hill Pistol Club hat? You got one of those. Do uh, we have one? I got sweatshirts. I got t-shirts. I don't have any hats. Oh, maybe I don't have that either then. Yeah. You so, going to come over to the club and shoot with me sometime? I would like to. Yeah? You don't You don't mind if I uh, miss a lot? Just as long as you're not missing up into the baffles. We yeah, don't, no, I'm we not. Don't like it. We don't like it when you hit the steel. You don't like me baffling people? Yeah, no. No. No, I don't, I'm not that bad. I'm just not very good. I can't see anymore, so. I've seen your Facebook videos. Yeah, I just basically, I just go by sound. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Like, so, Is your target still moving? Can you hear it? <laughs> Can you hear it? <laughs> Staggering. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Uh, it's not necessarily the most efficient way, but that's why you have to have a lot of ammo. Oh, I always I bring you. a lot of ammo. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. But anyway, so what would you think? I wasn't too happy with the results yesterday. I wasn't. It was, it was, uh, it was a little depressing. Uh, I, uh, to me, it simply signals that nothing's going to change for at least two more years. I don't, I don't know that there's going to be anything new to help Manchester. I don't um, know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe Because I know that right before the election... The number of homeless people on Elm Street declined greatly. So I'm sure uh, the mayor did something to affect that change. Yeah, I don't know what it is was. It, is it temporary? That's what I don't know. Is this because because it, parking and walking into the building here, right here on Elm Street to, tonight, um, I actually saw more cardboard beds and, and whatnot laid out ready for the evening this evening than I've seen in the last few weeks. See, I'm not observant. I thought those were just still there. I didn't know that they were new. No, I, there was a couple of new spots. Mm. So I'm, no one's moving off of Elm Street if they're homeless. They're, it's going to continue. Yeah, so that's what I don't know. I don't know if that was a stunt to make sure she got reelected or if she has actually some plan to do something about the drug, drug abuse and, and uh, homelessness because it's... It's it doesn't it's not pleasant well, to I, deal with. I'm a software engineer, so I can offer my um, skills to the mayor. I can uh, I can make a website uh, with a poop map, just like San Francisco. Oh, uh, so we'll we can it, we can at least you know well, we map out a, the atrocities. We that need are going is a needle map here in the city. A needle map would actually be helpful. No, we'll have we'll have both, right? Because, we'll, well, have, needle, we'll have a needle page a, and, a, and, a, and a poop, a poop page. map. Just makes your shoes dirty. A needle map would be a lot more practical because if you know that there is a probability of needles in this park or this park or this park, you know which one it's more it's safe it's to bring your kids. something we can calculate. I see my friends on Facebook posting pictures of needles they find in parking lots around the city on a regular basis, including uh, our friend uh, Baldassaro there. Yeah, yeah. So um, we can definitely track the needles that are in the city. That would be really. I think that would be actually helpful to the to citizens. It's sad that it's getting to that point. Do you think Mayor Craig will accept my help with that? I don't think she would. Oh. I think it'd have to be you know something people download and do themselves. Because, but um, I know, um, like I've said, I said last week, uh, my grandson saw a guy, for all intents and purposes, he thought was dead, just going to a school last year on uh, Parkside. You know, and there's, you know, needle next to the guy. And the, he, he did the right thing. He didn't touch anything. He went down and told the principal, and the cops got there, and I guess he uh, they were able to revive him or whatever. But um, it's just not, it's, it's not a healthy thing for children to be dealing with that on just on, you know, on their way to middle school, you know. 
Right. Well, I think we'll see at least some uh, scaling back of that, at least through the winter months. Folks are going to be heading inside into shelters and stuff, uh, I would I would assume. I don't, uh, but I, I definitely anticipate it ramping up again in spring. But I think, you know, and, and on the, uh, the flip side, I think Victoria did really good. She did do very well for, for uh, 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 a challenger. Uh, under 2,500 votes difference, I believe. Yeah, well, yeah, but the the thing is, I think... Um, um, she got her name out there. Mayor Craig had like and half a million dollars. she a relationship dollars. with a lot of people now. The, uh, what I read today is Mayor Craig had a half a million dollars, and Victoria had about a fifth of that, and still came pretty close to somebody who's an incumbent in a Democratic city, and... Um, uh, so in other words, the deck was absolutely stacked against Victoria, and she came pretty close. Right. So I think if the, the homelessness and the drug addiction and if the mayor doesn't do something about it, I think Victoria will probably clean her clock next in two years. I would agree. You know? I would agree. But we'll see. Because like you said, Victoria, got this is the first time running uh, citywide, so getting her name out, because everybody knew the mayor, but getting Victoria's name out, was uh, was a lot of work, and um, now it's out there. So the next time people <coughs> will have a choice because if things don't change, you would think people would say, "Well, she's had four years, and it's still a, it's worse than it was," or maybe maybe the well, mayor's we're thinking ma rationally. It, we're thinking rationally. Well, no, Gary. because the, the other thing to think about though is if if Victoria didn't challenge uh, the mayor. The mayor would be comfortable letting things just stay the way the status quo. If there isn't somebody that's waiting in the wings to unseat well, her, hopefully, maybe it is a wake up call for for, for Mayor Craig to to do something about she's the things not, that people she's, are concerned about. She's not an idiot, so she, sh right. I'm certain, can figure out uh, a way to deal with it. But but I get tired. I was over. I, I think I I told I was on Norm show. And what do you mean uh, you were tired? You didn't even do anything. You had everything taped around your neck. All you had to do was stand. No, you I didn't walked. use your hands or nothing. You, you just no, I walked. You had a sign I walked. Taped around no, your neck. because That's you all can't. You did all day. No, because I think the <laughs> <laughs> what a jerk. So the rules are: if you're standing out in front of the poles, you have to stand in this little confined area. Okay, I I ref I did not want to do that, and I'm not really sure exactly what the rules are. But what I did is I just went for a walk. I walked, well, it was over near uh, Memorial. Yeah. So I walked down almost to Dunkin' Donuts, then back, and then down to Dunkin' Donuts and back. All, I forget what street that is. But so, so I was basically walking. Just refilling your coffee cup each no, time. No, that's the other thing. Next time, see what I did <laughs> for the audience that doesn't know this. I had a Victoria Sullivan sign um, on my front and on my back held together with duct tape. And um, just like a classic sandwich board, sandwich board, right? Yeah. But what I next time I'll be smarter, and what I'll do is I'll stagger it so that the same because I made the sandwich board symmetrical. Well, that's not practical. Okay, what you really need is a sandwich board adjusted to one side or the other so your arms free. Because as long as when it's like this, you can't really like do anything. So, so put you it really off to the side so that you can. So you'd have arm free and drink coffee and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And that's the other thing. I got to add a coffee holder. A coffee holder. A coffee holder in okay. in in the sign. All right, we're gonna have to come up with these before the next, uh, uh, maybe, next round. Maybe yeah, maybe you know campaigning. some other stuff attached to it. You know. And then we patent it. Patent it, right? Right. Yeah. The Gary Hopper sandwich board. The, the Gary right. Hopper political sandwich board. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that'll work. <laughs> so many things that you come up with, Gary. I know. I know. So. <clears throat> I hear a disturbance. Uh, I don't think. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think our guest is gonna come today, Gary. I don't know. <clears throat> I know. I know he's a busy guy. So yeah. So tonight was uh, Bill Gardner was scheduled for the show, and I checked my machine to make sure he didn't cancel. But I also know he's super busy. So. Well, isn't I thought yesterday was opening day for 
for registering primary and all that stuff? I mean, that's exactly Yeah, presidential candidate started yeah. uh, filing so into his office yesterday. I think today, I think Tulsi Gab Gabbard yeah. went in there. Tomorrow, Mike Pence is going in there. Yeah, absolutely. This is this is his busy time. Just yeah, he's yeah. we're in the first two days, so it's understandable if he's busy and late. So. Yeah. So, have you been watching ABC News? Oh, the yeah. most trusted name in news lately, huh? Is that their motto? The most trusted? <laughs> is it? I don't know. It, it's one of them. I think one of them. One of them is. They that. all but talk about it. Trust ABC's, there. ABC's not holding back anything on their stories lately are they no no yeah, just for yeah. three years yeah so yeah. if you have uh, haven't uh, had the uh, been um, informed uh, one of the uh, project Veritas had somebody that works at is it NBC or ABC it's ABC, ABC. works at ABC record one of their anchors and I am not going to be uh, as critical of her as some others are um, so She's caught on an open mic talking about how she had um, all the test had witnesses, pictures, and evidence about all the stuff uh, Jeffrey Epstein was doing. And who she, she specifically named names as well. Right. Uh, again, on this open mic, not realizing that we're going to see this. One of them being Bill Clinton, obviously. Bill uh, Clinton. She 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 did call out Bill Clinton. Um, so go ahead. Um. Yes, yeah. So she named a, a few names, and, and Bill Clinton obviously being the m more prominent of the group. Uh, I think she. Uh, um, who's the lawyer? Dershowitz, Dershowitz. Dershowitz named him, but she said she had pictures and evidence and witnesses. Had the whole story written three years ago, and the and the uh, the executives at the uh, TV station would not let her run with it. And so she was very upset, and and some of the more cynical people are saying she's upset because she didn't get the scoop, which I'm sure is part of it. But if you watched her eyes when she's talking about about it, she seemed really upset that th those girls weren't protected. Yeah, she she's <coughs> she's definitely upset for for both of those reasons, um, and she is sincerely upset when you when you view this video. Um, it was. Uh, uh, the the mic was on the camera was on it was prior to her normal taping or it was in between commercials or 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 whatnot because at the end of the video they counter down to go live and they're going to go and they're going to record so so they were obviously getting ready but she was having a very candid conversation about all the information that she and all of ABC and and plenty of other news outlets had about Epstein and Epstein being this this uh, 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 prolific pedophile um, so Project Veritas released the video we can see that uh, ABC has had this for three years um, she's upset uh, the video was in August I believe so she was upset at all of this coming out um, uh, just prior to Epstein uh, uh, passing unexpectedly uh, I won't call it a suicide or a murder. she did um, <coughs> so she said there's she, no she's way definitely he killed himself. convinced that he did not kill himself yeah. uh, so after this video is released ABC releases a statement indicating that uh, the information that they had did not live up to their standards to be aired. Yet, if we look at what was aired during the last three years on ABC, unsubstantiated claims against Donald Trump, Kavanaugh. Brett Kavanaugh, uh, uh, Knob Creek, Kentucky, uh, uh, Night Shoot, uh, aired as though it were uh, Syrian bombing. Uh, oh, yeah, that Turkey. was them, too? Yeah, that was ABC, too. So so their standards for <coughs> reaching the airwaves and sending out, you know, phony information to, to folks around the country uh, seems to be a little bit one-sided. The only time that they uh, 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 Have adhered to their standards and had some sort of moral objection to airing anything was when it came to Epstein and Clinton. And... So I believe she was asked to write that statement. 
I, oh, she it, did. She, she did it, the she statement say it? came directly from her, saying that she she wasn't really as upset as she was uh, appeared to be in the video. Um, ah. but, but at the same time, we gotta we gotta think about some other information that we know from other sources. Uh, we know. For instance, when Epstein did get out of jail in 2015, uh, if you can call it that, he was he was on work release eight hours a day to his own office in his own home. Uh, but when he was finally done serving that sentence in Florida and he was allowed to return back to New York, to his apartment in New York, they had a party. Prince Andrew showed up at the party. A lot of other folks showed up at the did party. He did? But... One of the other people that showed up at that party, the congratulations, you're done with jail, Epstein party at Epstein's house, was George Stephanopoulos. Now, who oh. is George Stephanopoulos? He was President Clinton's press secretary. Yes, and then? And currently, he is a host of the morning show on ABC. Oh. Right? So why wouldn't ABC air information? about Epstein when George's name shows up on the list of associates. All right, so there's a lot of reasons why ABC decided that this information was not up to their standards to reach the airways. Yeah. And, and, and it includes some selfish reasons within the ABC family. Yeah, well, I was, uh, there was also part of the story was that the, uh, the royal family was putting a lot of pressure on ABC to not air the, uh, the video. So and that's the Prince Andrew angle. The, the Prince Andrew angle. Yep. And um, so there was a lot of pressure not to do it, but there's always going to be a lot of pressure n to not do the right thing. And that's, the, that's, that's where the uh, rubber meets the road. Well, that's what a lot of the conservative talk show hosts have been hammering on, is, is you people in the media, it doesn't really matter what your political leanings are, all right? If you are true to yourself, true to the truth, um, and you want to make a name for yourself, quit falling in line with all of these hoaxes, the Russia collusion hoax, the, the Ukraine hoax, the, quit falling into line to all of these liberal uh, talking points and go after the real stories, go after the Epstein story, dig into it, and uh, you'll come out of this a hero with a Pulitzer Prize. It, but, but no one wants to, to, to risk their jobs or go down that angle. The, uh, but but the, the one person who does, and it will happen, uh, hopefully sooner than later, but it will happen. And when that person does decide to break ranks with the mainstream media, with the DNC, when they decide to break ranks and expose everything that's going on, and 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 run these these uh, stories down, and get them on the air. Get them to Project Veritas. That person's going to win a Pulitzer. I'm telling you. Well, that, well the cool thing is the Project Veritas, because they've been do they've been doing a lot lately with uh, getting um, uh, people at CNN on record they're and saying how job. corrupt uh, CNN is. And now they they did this one, which was absolutely. See, the thing is, is uh, that this video was done by somebody at ABC who had the integrity to want something said. Right. They knew what the right thing to do was and and, re and that's what we need. And recorded we need more this. more people, you know, it was just like the fellow at CNN. Um, uh, he came out, he was and is a registered Democrat, a Bernie supporter. Yep. But he wanted the truth to come out regardless of who it hurt. That right. was the point. That was the entire point of what he's doing. So, yeah, that, that's what we need more of. We need we need more actual whistleblowers as opposed to what Washington calls whistleblowers, because, uh, uh, the, for instance, the CNN guy, like like Josh said, the guy was a registered Democrat, absolutely loved Bernie Sanders, went to work at CNN, uh, hoping to continue along those lines, I guess. But you know, kind of you know, believed in a cause, and then saw what um, CNN was doing to the truth, and didn't want to have any part of it, and started recording for Project Ver Veritas, which is pretty pretty uh, courageous. Well, so I'm sure he's not going to be employed anywhere anytime soon. CNN did probably the best thing they could do for themselves. They didn't make any statements. They haven't acknowledged 
any of that took place at all. They've just, they've ignored it completely. Whereas ABC has come out with, with these statements, and I think that's going to hurt them a little bit more than, than uh, they just ignored the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad they got her to say it, though, because I'm sure... I'm sure she's making buku bark, so it was either, you know, what do I do? Do I follow through and do what my employer says or lose my job? Well, you can tell watching the video that uh, 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 whichever way she leans politically, personally, um, did not uh, uh, enter into her her mindset when she was creating the story, when she was... Uh, gathering the information and talking to witnesses. Um, this was something that was beyond what she had for any political leanings, but it was shut down on her. Yep, yeah. It's too bad. Would have been a really cool story because three years ago, that mean that would have been less time uh, Epstein was out abusing three children. Three years fewer of, of victims. Yeah, oh. three years fewer of victims. And, you know... It's the other uh, somebody pointed out on online today also that one of the uh, possible um, reasons that they didn't run the story was because it was three years ago would have been right during the election and a story about Epstein and Bill Clinton would have hurt uh, Hillary Clinton as she's running for president. So again, it's it's the motivation is is really really sketchy. Well, I, I, that's uh, I. I firmly believe that's exactly why George Stephanopoulos is where he's at. He has that job for a particular reason. He's there to make sure that ABC doesn't do anything to hurt the DNC and the Clinton specifically. It's the same with with uh, Fredo Cuomo. He works for CNN. His job is to make sure that CNN doesn't air anything that hurts the political family. Right? His brothers and his father and. So how much do you, you know, think that's that's there's a plant in each one of the media outlets? Well, it's not just a plant. If you look at most of the media outlets that we have today, most of them are married to or related to people in DC. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so there's there's this uh, um, nepotism, if you want to call it that, that is rampant between the news media and the DC insiders. And, and, and that, that's what leads to the news media being so upset about the clearing of the swamp, right? Because the media, the mainstream media, views themselves as part of the swamp, the, or, or they don't consider themselves swamp, but Pro they, they're they, protectors they of believe the swamp. that they are Washington. Right. right, Washington them and them are are one and the same, and and they deserve all of that respect. That's what they expect. See, I, I think what hap what happened has happened is that forever, for a long, long time, probably at least twenty years, the Washington establishment has run the government. And what I mean by that is the establishment, the NSA, the, the uh, um, FBI, Secret Service, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, CIA, have basically had um, control of all the information. Well, if you control all the information, then you can control what, what happens. So if I give you the president information that um, the president of you know, uh, um, Syria did X. Well, the president is given that information. He has to decide whether or not to retaliate against X or the, that president of Syria. And, and if he's given that information and said how horrible it is and this is how vulnerable he is and where he's vulnerable, we could do X in retaliation for him doing X. That's all the president has for information. So basically, they have controlled foreign policy forever, and uh, I don't believe, I'm not sure how often, but they seem to seldom actually tell the president the truth. Because if you look at Obama, when Obama came into office, one of the reasons a lot of people were enthusiastic about Obama getting into office was that he was anti-constant warfare, 
right? That was one of the things he ran on, is he didn't believe it was necessary to be in war all around the world all the time, okay? Is that true? It, it is true, okay. and he won a Nobel Peace he Prize won a Nobel prior Peace. to taking office He's based on just that view. You're right. Except once he took office, what happened, Gary? He was as bad or if not worse than every other president. The other thing, as far as this co collusion between the media and uh, Washington, if you look at when Bush was in, national propaganda radio would regularly tell you how many GIs died in Afghanistan and Iraq. It was part of their, I don't know if it was daily. But Suddenly it, that weekly count went no, it was gone as soon as Obama took office. That number disappeared. We don't know how many people were dying each week because National Propaganda Radio wasn't telling you who was dying each week. But what I think happened to Obama is I think he went in there with the intention of, of uh, reducing the quantities of wars and everything else. But the only information he gets is from the CIA and all this other stuff. And I think one of the reasons Trump is fi uh, facing so much um, pushback, and that that's all it is, the impeachment, multiple impeachment uh, proceedings are all the swamp fighting back. It has nothing to do with reality. Um, is because Trump is willing to say, no, that, that's, no, we're not going in there. No, we're not going to retaliate. No, we're not sending more soldiers in there. And this, the CIA has had their way with the president for so long, they're really upset. And that's why they sent people into the... Now think about this. This last quote-unquote whistleblower was sent into the White House to spy on the United States president. Yeah, so... So, so this that's, that is... The, the CIA... The, uh, um, uh, and all those different agencies are answerable to the president. They are not, they're not supposed to be dictating what happens to the president. They're only supposed to inform, and the president decides. So if you get to a point where agencies are spying on the president to try to find something to uh, hang him with, it, we have, we, this, that's, a, that's a coup. That isn't what's, a whistleblower. What's happened is, is, is he is doing exactly what he promised, and that is to clear out the swamp. And the swamp is, getting, um, is starting to realize that he intends to keep that promise. And so they're not able to wield their power the way they're used to wielding their power. Right. right. He's not he's not following the protocols that they've put in place and that they have told every president, this is how it's gonna do, this is the information we're gonna give you, and these are the decisions you're gonna make based on that information. And he's not playing that game. And he's he started not playing that game uh while he was still president elect. All right. So <clears throat> just prior to the elections, uh, a normal procedure is that uh, the candidates that look like they're going to be the front runners in the election, the first thing that happens is that they get Secret Service detail. They get protective detail. The next thing that happens is, is as you get closer to the election, within a few weeks or so, um, the candidates start getting uh, weekly national security updates, right, uh, briefings. And then <clears throat> after the election, the president-elect gets a daily uh, national security briefing just like the president does. That's the first thing that happens in the morning when the president gets up is he's supposed to get a national security briefing. Here's what's going on in the world today. Here are the things that you need to be worried about, and here are the things that we need decisions on today. And Trump, right from the get-go, while he was still president-elect, said, no, I'm not, I, I, I don't need to do this every single day because you're, you're giving me a report every single day, and on this, on this report, these three or four lines have changed, right? The rest of it is the same report. I don't need to listen to the same report on a daily basis. Right. And it was during that period of time that the FBI, the NSA, the CIA, they started realizing that they're not, going to be able to hand the president some paperwork and say, hey, um, you know, this is what we need done today. And, and it was, that was part of the guise under which Comey 
went to the president or went to Donald Trump and said, hey, here's a dossier. Here's the kinds of things that are going to be showing up in these daily briefings that you need to know about on a daily basis. This fake steel dossier. Right. Uh, which then was used uh, against him uh, uh, as part of this, this phony uh, uh, Russian collusion story. So it, it started before he even took the oath of office, where he started saying, pushing back and saying, no, that's not how I work. And that's not how my administration's going to work. You're not going to come with to me on a daily basis and tell me that these are the things I need to do. I've got an agenda, and I'm going to do it. And I think that's the problem, is that these agencies, the people who have been embedded in there, um, the, their full-time jobs, 20 or 30 years in Washington, uh, working in the White House, around the White House, they're starting to realize that they cannot yield the power that they're normal, that they're used to yielding. And... They're seeing their jibes go away. Well, I think it's not just that. I think it's. I think that's part of part of it. I think you've got the uh, military-industrial complex that, you know, telling a president we need to, you know, send uh, uh, twenty cruise missiles into, you know, the uh, aspirin factory. The aspirin factory. Yeah, that was, the, was that Clinton? It was Clinton or Obama? Obama. Or Obama. Yeah. No, it was Clinton. Clinton. We need to send 20... Oh, oh, yeah, it was the Aspen factory right before Clinton's impeachment. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, he was trying to distract. Yeah. So anyway, so that's what, you know, uh, um, Clinton did. He sent, you know, a bunch of cruise missiles and blew up an Aspen factory. Well, the beauty of that is, yes, there's collateral damage, i.e. you kill people, innocent people, but the great thing is those missiles have to be replaced, and there's a lot of people in Washington, D.C. At $10 million each. At $10 million each who make a lot of money making sure stuff is replaced. Well, you don't need things replaced if they're not used. So there's a lot of money to be made for constant warfare. So there's, there's that variable. Um, there's also the variable that some of these people in these positions probably have money invested in these things in Raytheon or wherever the missiles come from. Burisma, Burisma. Bain, Bain Capital, was that, that's a... Yeah, and, and, and yeah. then you, you look at what the most recent in, in insanity that we're looking at now, which is the reason they have to impress the pres impeach the president today, <coughs> um, is because Trump asked the leader of Ukraine to look into corruption in 2016. That's what he did. That's all he said. Yeah, he didn't mention names or anything in that transcript. He asked to look into it, and he did so based on a treaty with the, between the United States and Ukraine about collaborating on corruption, the, the, the specific. The treaty was signed into law by somebody named Clinton, I believe, in 1998. Right. So President Trump is following the law. Right. The law laid down by Congress and Congress. So Congress writes the law, Trump follows it, and now he's being impeached for it. So the, um, the deal is that something like that, that uh, the dealings they had with Burisma and Ukraine... There was a lot of people making a lot of money. I mean, if you look at it like this, so, so the United States government takes your tax money, takes a billion dollars, right? And it gives it to Ukraine as a loan guarantee or whatever. I don't, don't think that necessarily pay us back. But they really needed the money because, you know, uh, Russia was sitting on, their, sitting on their doorstep and we had already asked them to disarm and we'd protect them, which is not what we did. And... So we give them a billion dollars. Well, if there's a billion dollars going over there, there's plenty of graft coming back. So you had uh, Joe Biden's son. Um, Pelosi's son. Pelosi's son. It, it was a different, but it was an energy company. Is that a, so yeah, the same kind of thing. Yep. So in other words, if they get a billion dollars, they can... has some interest over there. They can afford to give the jobs to sons and grandsons and, and wives of different people back in the United States... So they take your tax money, give it to that country, um, and then that country 
send some of that back in kickbacks, and now they have advocates at the highest levels advocating to keep giving money to Ukraine. And that goes on all around the world. So all, a lot of your tax foreign, um, I think that's the other thing, is if you, Trump's position is he does not like um, foreign uh, lending out American tax dollars to foreign countries. Right. So that's where a lot of money comes from for these, these uh, politicians in D.C., I mean, you, you, you look at how rich Nancy Pelosi is or Schumer or, or – and Republicans too, by the way. It's not just a, a, a Democratic oh, it goes, thing. It goes in all directions. That's exactly what Trump said he was going to get rid of. Um, that is the swamp. He's, that is the swamp. He's, 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 not, he's not being partisan about getting rid of these folks and, these, and, their, um, and their corruption. No, and that's why if you look at the news, you'll find out, like right now, Trump's in, in trouble for doing his job. Um, and the reason you have never Trumpers, um, my guess is they're making a lot of money the way things are, and they they're don't the want the they don't the want the uh, apple cart upset. But they're they're bankrupting bankrupting your country for self interest. Just look at any politician that goes to D.C. If they go if if they go to DC for eight years or 12 16 years and are profoundly richer than when they left the, the state they came from there's a problem you know I would I would love to see I, I have not seen this I would love to see a list of congressmen and senators that um, before and after office I, I, I've seen it you've seen it well I not a full list, but I'm there's there's the uh, uh, Pelosi, Schiff, Schumer, Obama, Clinton. I mean, the Clintons weren't even millionaires when they entered office, and now they're worth over 140, or I don't know, even more than that. Well, Clinton, Clinton, um, and uh, Hillary said after the the presidency that they were completely broke from lawyers' fees. Is that why they stole all the furniture? That's why they from stole the, the furniture. They needed it for their new house. <coughs> uh, well that's that's absolutely wrong. Uh, so and Obama came from Chicago, uh, but yet they just bought a fifteen million dollar house on Martha's Vineyard. That one's almost I have to defend this a little bit. He did make a lot of money writing books and doing book tours. Oh. So But I still don't understand why you buy a house on the ocean at Martha's Vineyard when when global warming is going to make the seas rise up, uh, their, you want to be there. You, be underwater you, you in five be, years, right? You want to be there to watch it, <laughs> to keep an eye on the ocean to make sure. You know, I think it's just it's just altruism, basically. That is what that's all about. Yeah. I will waste my fifteen million dollars on this property to make sure I'm there when that water rises to warn everybody. Oh, is that what it is? I think so. That I don't think that water is going to rise not even an inch in the no, next twenty years. No, probably not. But but well, yeah, that's the other thing. All of these, all of these Democrat senators' uh, children uh, work for uh, Ukrainian energy companies, gas companies, Burisma. So, so you get the the Biden has his and and Pelosi has her son working for these energy companies. Why is it that all of these liberal families are advocating and working for these natural gas companies in Ukraine, but back home? If you were to work for an energy company, you're the you're the devil. You're evil. Right. Right. Why aren't Why aren't they out there pushing wind and solar power in the Ukraine instead of making money off of natural gas and and fossil fuel companies? Yeah, it would be Ukraine? cool. It would be cool. I don't understand why they. What's the disconnect there? Yeah, I don't know why they haven't divested. Yeah. From uh, oil and gas companies, seeing that they're so adamantly opposed to it because of the. They're so quote unquote carbon footprint. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's like it's another, everything else. Another mystery. Yeah, it's it's like everything else in D.C. It's so corrupt. The other thing too to keep in mind, you know, when you're looking at the news, remember that the uh, President Donald Trump is probably the first person, maybe not not obviously not in history. That can't be the case because he used to be pretty honorable, um, but one of the first presidents in recent memory that is going to leave Washington, D.C. with less money than he, he went there with. He's losing money being president of the United States. He actually donates all his salary to different groups every quarter. So he's not even taking a salary 
and he's his business has been hurt. If, oh, here's here's to me one of the most obvious. You know, if if you think the uh, if you are in question as to whether or not the media is biased, I think I have the most obvious example of how biased it truly is. And I'm sure people have been around for uh, a few years. Remember when Obama took office? The the news media, the Daily Shows, the View, all, uh, magazines had pictures of Michelle Obama all over the place. The most beautiful first lady. She's a beautiful woman. Now, personally, I think it's all BS. I don't think how pretty the first lady is is a relevant variable. I think it was pretty uh, obnoxious how they used to uh, um, make fun of uh, George, uh, first George Bush's wife and what she looked like. I thought that was out of bounds and... Um, it was downright cruel. It was during, cruel. During the, during the 90s, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so the press just ogled over Michelle Obama, okay? And whether she's attractive or not, I don't know. I mean, she's okay. So that was, that was for years. Michelle Obama was everywhere, was on these, these shows, was this and that. And, and the press couldn't get enough of her. Am I right? You are correct. Okay, so now you take President Trump gets elected, and arguably one of the most beautiful women in history is his wife, and she gets tooled on. I think if you take the 45 presidents and they put their wives, some of them weren't married, I think Melania... Easily, I, easily hands, the prettiest. She's easily the most beautiful oh, first lady we've ever had. Easy on the eyes. She, she's very easy on the eyes. <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to say that. We're not allowed to, to use that phrase. To easy on that, the eyes so. is a... Is a yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a very heinous... Anyway, and like again, I, I still don't think it's relevant... How pretty the first lady is it doesn't seem to me to me a, a, a pertinent uh, thing but the fact of how the mo news media covered the two different women is very very telling they have they have trashed Melania they attacked her they attacked their son right the, he's just a little kid you know that oh, little yeah. kid oh, yeah. can it's speak three different languages oh, yeah. fluently he's, he's a very He's a very intelligent young man, um, and and that was where I was going to say next too was 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 how they treat the children, right? Right. Um, so we get nothing but trash about these super intelligent Trump children. Um, you know, some of them are grown, and of course they've got uh, uh, the young one there, um, and and so the media is just trashing these children. But what does the media have to say about the Obama children, right? right? Uh, these girls are, are out there smoking pot. We've got smoking pot with their Secret Service detail. Well, the, the Secret Service detail is a smoking pot, but but under the nose of their Secret Service yeah. detail, they're getting in trouble, um, and it's all being covered up. Um, phone calls are being made to, to uh, local sheriff's office. Say, yeah, yeah, you need to, you know, let them go. Uh, you know, there's, there's legitimate story about the Obama children well, the, the, that's well, the, to be told, but, the but we're not is, hearing it. There's a difference, though. The Obama children are old, or old enough now. They're in their 20s, aren't they? I really haven't been kept no, they, track of children. They, well, they they were crossing the line in the teen to 20s. Because they're in college. They're, they're in college now, okay. yes. So, yeah, so, so at least they're adults. But, they, but the news media was trash at uh, uh, Brandon. When he was 10. When he was 10. Like I said, the kid can speak three languages. You know why that kid can speak three languages? Because his mom teaches him. <laughs> There's no nanny doing that. That's his mother educating that child, and the kid is, is just turning out absolutely brilliant. So, uh, yeah, if, if, if you don't think that the media is biased, all you have to do is look at how they treated uh, Trump's wife to Obama's wife. It's night and day, an absolutely night and day. Or you can just watch Project Veritas and watch the full videos that they're releasing. <coughs> Why? What are they releasing now? I know they did CNN, and then well, they, they did this. The ABC, the was ABC yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Uh, there'll See, be more. That's the other thing too. Is if you, uh, um, 
years ago when uh, we were uh, trying to take Suter's house up in Ware, um, the reason uh, Josh and I and a few others got together as a group, the reason we did that is because we know the media well enough to know that what the media does is instead of um, arguing a point or an idea or a, a or simply reporting what's taking or place. reporting what's taking place, what they'll do is they'll find the leader of a group and then attack that person and attack that person's character, and and and, and that's what they've done with Project Veritas. I think he made one mistake. He was sued, and I don't even think they won. But that's all they do is they claim, oh, yeah, w discard whatever he says because this happened. Right. When these but are actual tapes of people at CNN or tapes, in this case of ABC, they're actual tapes. You're listening to them, the people saying it, not, not an uh, interpretation of what they may have said. The other thing that I found that the media likes to do is... Um, uh, you get the the on the scene reporters, the folks that are that you don't see, the folks that are writing the story, the folks that are standing behind the camera when they're filming something taking place. Um, if they show up with the intent of filming a story or getting an interview or something like that, and they're not getting what they expected to get, they will try to incite something yes right so i've had reporters come up to me um reporters came all the way up from boston they wanted to get a story uh we had a couple of state reps uh we had uh we had police in the area and then we had a crowd of people and uh um and we were just talking we were being civil Folks were kind of debating. Uh, it wasn't time to go into the building yet. We were, we were. Well, uh, was this? this was in the parking lot at the town hall and where. And then I had a reporter come up to me. So, uh, you know, one of your state reps is over there. Why don't you go over and ask them this? Why don't you go over and I'm like, well, I've already had that conversation with them. Well, why don't you go over and do it again and maybe you know talk about this? They, the purpose there is to incite something to take place. Right. And and that's what they're out there to, to do. And, and that's if you watch the news, that's all you see is controversy. They cannot report something civil taking place. They cannot report a conversation and a debate and agreement coming to 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 play uh, uh, because that doesn't get them viewers. That doesn't create controversy. They don't put anything on the air unless it's controversial. And so if they show up, they feel like they're wasting their time and they will incite people to do things. Right. And so uh, that's a very mild uh, form of, of, of this taking place in, in my case where they're saying, hey, go over there and insert yourself into a conversation that you're not invited to and, and say something. Uh, but you take that to the next extreme is you see video of riots you see videos of of uh of what are supposed to be peaceful sit-in protests and the people behind the cameras filming this if they're if all they're seeing is a bunch of people sitting on the ground across the road that doesn't satisfy them so they start talking to people off mic saying hey why don't you do this why don't you do this you know what would be a great idea it would make great videos if you did this what you see on TV is is not what's taking place. Much of it's staged. Yeah, I think the best example of that was um, I forget which what's what's the uh, the news reporter that's got the uh, uh, beautiful white hair <coughs> white hair like mine. I forget his name. Uh, is he retired? No, I think he's still on there. But anyway, he was doing a, a report on the. Uh, uh, flooding somewhere <laughs> and it was it was so great because he's doing a report on the flooding and he waded down into basically a uh, a ditch I know a what ditch you're talking about right so he's like up to his waist in the water reporting about this the flooding <laughs> right and the camera crew somebody took a picture of the camera crew and they're all on dry land so he had to get himself soaked to make it look like it was much worse than it was. Right. It was it was pretty pretty ridiculous. Yeah, and they, they, that's that's very common with floods and hurricanes and and snowstorms. 
you got to go find a, a snow bank, a snow drift that uh, is 10 feet higher than the rest of the, the snowstorm. Yeah, yeah. You know. It is. It is. It's all about keeping their jobs. It's all about uh, uh, convincing their bosses that they can they can draw viewers with something controversial. It's it, the, the old adage that if it bleeds, it leads is actually true, and it also carries on into other things where they just they exaggerate what's really going on to uh, try to get more viewers to tune in. I mean, all, uh, uh, if, if all you have to do is look over the last few years and how many times have you seen signs on the, on the feed, say, breaking news or what other, what other operative words do they use for breaking news? There, this, this is a Fox News alert. Alert, yeah, alert, breaking news. They have news. those about six times an hour now. It's... And when I hear that sound, I'm expecting, you know, something big to happen, like the, you know, the space shuttle blew up on reentry or something like that. That's, that's when I, I want to hear an alert, but I hear it six times a day for something that I heard, you know, yesterday. Right. Something right. that I've already read and, 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 and educated myself on. Right. <clears throat> yeah, it's, 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 it, we're, we're, being, we're being scammed. So you get the news media scamming us on one side, and obviously super left leaning, and that's why you, you see the uh, this uh, constant attacks on Trump. There, I've never I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen a, a but it, it's true with Congress too, because Congress loves conflict. I mean. If the news reporters didn't cover Adam Schiff coming out once once a, a day with this latest releva- revelation, he yeah. would stop doing it. Yeah, no, and that's exactly why uh, today they announced, or he came out and he announced that he's having public hearings next Wednesday, starting next Wednesday. So that gives another seven-day news cycle. Hey, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And then the hearings will start. So, so they're dragging this out. This is... This is this is a campaign. It's all theater, it, and that's exactly what it is. It it's is all just theater, so and the the instead of just holding them, he's gonna oh well, we're gonna schedule these out here, and and give you an entire cycle to to hash through more stuff. Yeah, it's it's it's. It, it I wouldn't bother me except they're using the word impeachment, and impeachment is high crimes and misdemeanors. High crimes and misdemeanors is also high misdemeanors because back when this was written, high crime and misdemeanor meant like treason. Right. Um, somebody had, if somebody actually had colluded with another government to undermine the government of right. the United States, um, like made a, uh, you know, allowed, an, like if somebody sold, if a president had sold, um, the design for a nuclear submarine to a Russian agent or to uh, gave it to Putin in exchange for something, um, that would be treasonous. That would be high crimes and misdemeanors. Um, calling up a, a, a historically corrupt government and say, are you doing anything to investigate the corruption is not a high crime or a misdemeanor. It's actually just doing his job. So, you know, we're, we're taking the word impeachment, which used to be very, very significant, and the Democrats have basically diluted it to people don't even, they hear the word impeachment on the news, and people are p- not even paying attention. Yep. So um, they're, they're starting to change up their language again. So, so good, the, good. The, words, the, uh, the word went out uh, yesterday, obviously, because now, now uh, uh, the the mainstream media and the, and the liberal senators and representatives are they're not using the term quid pro quo anymore. Now they're just calling it simply bribery. Bribery. So so, so now okay, so they, the word went out that they're that they're going to stop using it, um, and so and so now you're going to start hearing the mainstream media uh, back away from using the term quid pro quo because they know that didn't happen. Right. So, so they're, they're changing their line. Um, when these hearings start next week, what's going to happen is every single witness that's called and every piece of information that comes out uh, is going to already have been uh, 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 
pre-dismissed or, 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 or proven uh, illegitimate already. We already know that the witnesses aren't real witnesses. We already know that the tr what is in the transcript. Um, uh, so, so they're trying to change their language because they know that what's coming out is not going to be what they've been telling us it is. So they're already starting to change their language. We're going to see that over the next couple of days. They're going to try and back away from the quid pro quo and try to uh, pass it off as something else like bribery, bribery or, right. or, or something of, of that nature. Yeah, cause it's, it, yeah it's, it's, it's kind of maddening. But you know, keep in mind, for two years, Adam Schiff said that he had absolute proof that Trump co uh, uh, colluded with the Russians. For two years he said that, until the Mueller report finally came out. And then he claimed that, while well, there's some misunderstanding. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, he lied for two years. He hasn't mm -hmm. produced any of that. And uh, if he had it, if he still has it, the question is, why didn't he give it to Mueller <laughs> during right. the investigation? Yeah, if, if, <laughs> if you had incontrovertible evidence, why didn't you produce it during the investigation that you were counting on? So, and and yeah. try to look at the, the bigger picture. You had Brennan... Uh, saying the same thing for two years, that he had good inside information, that, you know, they have proof that Trump uh, uh, colluded with the Russians. You had uh, uh, Mueller going, uh, not Mueller, who is it, the uh, jerk FBI director? Comey. Comey going out saying all kinds, snobby little jerk coming out saying all kinds of things. They've been, they told you for two years that Trump was colluding and they're just on the precipice of of releasing all this information that is going to convince the American people of how horrible and, and the collusion that he involved in was in. And the fact of the matter is the only one that colluded with the Russians was Hillary Clinton. And that was where the real collusion was, but you didn't hear hardly any of it because they're lying to you. And so this latest attempt for an impeachment is just a, more of the same because they have to do something if, if you... They no, uh, they also have to wrap it up soon. They have to do something, um, like Gary said, because they don't, they don't, they don't have the uh, 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 the will to work with the president on getting rid of this this uh, the swamp. They have to do something because they're afraid of being exposed for who they are, uh, uh, such as uh, uh, Hunter Biden and um, Paul Pelosi. Um, working for these Ukrainian companies. They don't want that exposed, so they're doing everything they can to prevent that from being exposed. Um, but the other thing that they have to do is they have to wrap it up quickly, Gary. Why? Because <clears throat> um, they have to move on to the next thing. If, he, if they go through the impeachment process and he gets an impeachment trial in the Senate and he's acquitted in the Senate and then next year's election comes along with an acquittal, how are they going to run against an acquitted, right? They don't... Oh, they'll, they can you, still you see, they can still. But that's, that's the other thing, is that if this is still going on, if they go ahead and impeach him, he's going to get reelected anyway, right? So the, the point is, if they're convinced that they can uh, uh, beat Trump in the next election, they wouldn't be doing this. No, that's, right? all, that's what it's all about. That's, they want him out of there they, because they're, they're covering they their They know butts. he's going to win the next election, so they have to do something. They have to keep something negative in the news cycle through the entire process. Yeah. Hey, we got to go. Josh, thank you. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. All right, thank you.